All right, so today uh, we are jumping into a two-week series. Uh, right before Easter, we're going to do a series called Too Much But Never Enough. Too Much But Never Enough. And the idea uh, that I recognize for a lot of us is there are things in our life um, that we, it's like we got more than enough of, and yet it seems like it's never enough, right? They, they, I got too much. Like for some of you, uh, one of the biggest ones, you might have a lot of empathy. You're like, you got too much empathy sometimes, and you carry all these weights and all of these burdens, and then you've emptied your empathy and you come home and you don't have empathy for your family. It's like there's too much, but there's not enough. You know, for maybe a simpler example is like your laundry. You have too much laundry. No matter how much you do, it's never enough, right? You just keep going. It just, like, I just got done. It just got clean. And now I've got more. There may be with your finances, like I got, I got enough to overspend, but not enough to pay my bills, right? It's too much, but never enough. And so there's an invite when we, we get to that place. When we get to a place where we're overloaded, where just maybe life just seems like it's too much. Maybe the call of God on our life may feel like it's too much. Maybe the next steps in our life, you just get overwhelmed. Like the, the next small thing that comes, comes at me, I'm going to lose it. I'm going to be done, right? You just, it gets to be too much. There's an invite from Jesus. And here's what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So these, this, this section of verses uh, is what we're going to talk about for the next two weeks. And today I want to process, kind of give a little bit of backstory of what he's talking about, maybe some historical context of how they would originally heard it. But uh, I'm going to challenge you to maybe lay down some things. So maybe, maybe trade the burdens that you've been carrying. Maybe uh, trade some things that you are overwhelmed with and try to figure out a way to lay them at Jesus' feet and only pick up his burden for your life. Because I have found that Jesus says my burden is light, and yet I have found in my own life that my burden isn't always light, which means there's, there's a disconnect between what he's saying and what I'm living out. So how do we walk through that? Um, and what Jesus says, one of the things he says is not only is my burden light, uh, but my yoke is easy. Okay. So if you ever wondered how Jesus liked his eggs, we know now he likes them over easy. Um, we're not talking about, we're not talking about eggs. Uh, that's not a very common term. So when you hear it, you just skim over it, right? If you've heard it a long time in your life, you just skimmed right over that. I don't know what a yoke is, but apparently Jesus is easy. So we just keep moving on. So let's talk about a yoke real quick and what he means about attaching himself to uh, attaching us to him. Here's a picture of a yoke. Okay. Um, this is just a cartoon drawing of a yoke. I, I, I figured you already knew that. Those aren't real animals. Um, but that wood piece in the middle is the yoke. And you would take a, a well-trained animal, uh, a, a, a smarter animal, older animal, more mature animal, and you would take a younger animal that was needing to be trained and developed, and you would attach a yoke. Right? If you're plowing the field, you would take a trained oxen that knew what it was doing, knew how to follow the, the reins, knew how to follow the guide of the farmer, and you would attach a younger one to that more mature one, and it would understand uh, what you're called to do. Now, the irony of this picture, and I, I, I had to use this one, and I couldn't go any further, is because there's actually a verse in the Old Testament that tells you not to yoke two different animals together. So this picture is like scripturally inaccurate and I found it on a Christian website and it even showed the verses about how a donkey shouldn't be attached to an oxen and yet here we are. So this is a horribly inaccurate picture as far as how you would attach a donkey to an oxen. It would need to be two donkeys or two uh, oxen, but here we are. So that's kind of the idea of a yoke, right? That you attach yourself. And when I first read this and I kind of understand what Jesus is saying about like, hey, come and yoke yoke yourself to me, get attached to me. Either either he's saying I'm the farmer or I'm the more mature animal. Either way, he's calling us donkeys. He's calling us dumb oxen, all right, if we're, if we're honest. And I don't like it, right? If I can be honest about what Jesus is saying about me, I want to reject it. I'm not a dumb donkey, especially not the King James version of donkey, if you're familiar with that. Don't call me that, Jesus. How dare you? Except... <laughs> Except for I am sometimes, right? Like, I don't like it except for it's true a lot of the times. I am utterly foolish, right? I'm just completely as, I, I can be at times as dumb as they come. And you're like, no, Jared, that's not you, never. You're so smart. No, no, no. I know what you're thinking. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, 
Yeah, I'm like real dumb. And donkeys are pretty dumb. My, my sister and her family have a, a, like a miniature donkey and just middle of the night, it, I hear it from the distance. We live down the road and I can hear this dumb donkey running and chases horses that are bigger than him. It just doesn't even make sense. But that's me all the time, chasing things that I can't contain, yelling in the middle of the night, not making any sense. And yet that, that's me and, and I don't like it. And, and, and what I would like Jesus to say is not come yoke yourself to me. Um, I would actually like him to say, go be free, right? Like I want to be the donkey that's smart enough to be outside the fence and just to run amok. I just want to, I just want to run the hillside. I want to be free to run the hillside and just to do whatever, uh, whatever I want to do, because that's what I would like Jesus to say to me. And that's not what he says. He says to us, you don't get to re be released from the yoke. You actually need the yoke because you're a dumb donkey, a dumb King James donkey, if you will, if you want to take that label upon you. That's what Jesus says. And the original hearers uh, of, this, of this verse would have actually gone back to Jeremiah. And the reason they would have gone back to Jeremiah is because Jeremiah 5 talks about the yoke. And then uh, Jeremiah 6 talks about the, the rest, that the, 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 the you would uh, let go of a burden and have an easy rest. And so let's take a look at Jer Jeremiah 5, chapters, uh, verses 5 and 6. It says, So I will go to the leaders and speak to them. Surely they know the way of the Lord, the requirements of their God. But with one accord, they too had broken off the yoke and torn off the bonds. Therefore, a lion from the forest will attack them. A wolf from the desert will ravage them. A leopard will lie in wait near their towns to tear to pieces any who venture out. For their rebellion is great and their backslidings many. Uh, this, this imagery that we're kind of reading in these verses and what Jesus is saying to us, you dumb donkey, uh, this is my interpretation. Don't, don't maybe, you don't have to accept that, all right? This is just how I need Jesus to talk to me, all right? If you need him to be more gentle to you, but I need, I am like a dumb donkey, so I need a swift kick in the rear. So sometimes I need Jesus to be really clear with me. If you need him to be more gentle, that's fine too. He'll call you your, your, you know, his favorite donkey. That's fine. You can be his pet favorite donkey. I'm the dumb one that he needs to kick. And what he's saying here is like, we as the, 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 the King James donkeys, uh, we, we need the yoke because apart from the yoke, apart from the fence, apart from the barrier, uh, apart from the guard, there are some things that are going to attack us. There are some things out there that would love to destroy us. And if what Jesus is saying is accurate, if we believe Jesus at his word and we believe it's the word of God, he's saying like, you are going to die on your own. You by yourself without the yoke that I provide for you, you by yourself, you are looking for destruction, not just like a kind of a destruction. Without the yoke that I have for you, that's actually easy. Without the yoke I have for you, there are things out there that are trying to destroy you. It's not like you have to, you, you have to do work to find them. Just get outside the fence and find out there's a lion that prowls around the earth looking for an opportunity to destroy you and your family. Just for a moment, get away from God. Get out of church for a season. Don't talk to God and find out what it looks like. Because we've all experienced that, I would think, if you follow Jesus for any length of time and decided to back off a little bit and find out how quickly life can take a turn, how quickly destruction can happen, how quickly everything around you can look okay, but internally you're, dis you're dying. Like you just don't feel good. It's like externally I should be okay, but I'm actually, I feel terrible because without his yoke, there's destruction waiting for us. Now, we, we know what it looks like to love something and to also provide a yoke for it, right? Because my desire would be just like, you love something, let it go. And if it really loves you, it's going to come back, you know? But we know what it looks like to, to love a dumb animal and know that it needs protection, right? Because for all of you out here, we wouldn't say to you, hey, if you really love your dog, don't put a fence up. Just let it roam, roam the neighborhood. If you really love your dog, just go, just, just, just do, let it do whatever it wants to do because it wants to be free. The dog wants to be free. And real freedom for that dog would just be, hey, go out and do whatever you want. Except for we all know what would happen to that dog. He would go get in a fight with another dog. He would go get run over by a, a, a car. He would go do something stupid because that's what dogs do. And if we'll be honest with ourselves, we need the yoke, the protection, the fence of a God who loves us enough to build it who said, no, 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 I, I'm not trying to confine you. I'm not trying to contain you. I'm actually trying to set you free because you can't handle life without the fences. You can't handle life without the yoke. You need my direction. You need my path. I don't like it. I would love the idea that I'm just strong enough. I'm good enough and I'll just go protect myself. But it seems like that's not how life works. Like that, that's just not the way it works. Like it, it would seem like uh, people who didn't follow Jesus, if that's how life worked, that, that more people would just 
bail on all the complications of life. Like more people would just take their family to a beach and just work a little bit and just, just live, live and let live and just die when they die, right? That's how life seems like it would go. If we didn't need yoke, if we didn't need protection, we didn't need boundaries, all of our insecurities wouldn't need us to go out there and, and prove something to the world or get our promotions. We can just make enough to get by and go live in the mountains, just chill, just, just go get a cabin in the woods and just you and your family hang out. But that's not what happens. Even the ones that do that now have to make a YouTube video to get the attention that they're doing it. Have you noticed that? Like, you're like, you finally escaped. Good. Oh, wait. No, now you still need attention for what you did to get away from society. Because there's something in us that needs that protection, that has an insecurity, a depth. And, and what, what, what progresses in this idea of a yoke is that some of the first century rabbis are having conversations about this yoke, and it progresses to the idea that it's not just, it's not just that you're going to die without the yoke and there's something going to destroy you. It is that you, eat, you have a yoke already. Coming to Jesus and, and getting his yoke that is easy is not about like, I, I was free. I was a wild donkey out there on the hillside just living the dream like Shrek's donkey. I was just out there living the dream, just having a good time, married to a dragon, I guess. I don't know. Just out there. That was a Shrek reverence. Uh, that didn't make sense if you haven't seen Shrek. But I don't want to run it for you, but there's a... Uh, anyways, all right, let's move on. So out there just living free, just like a free donkey, except what, what we're finding out is that, no, 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 we go out and we have a yoke whether we like it or not. We have a burden, whether we like it or not. We have something that we're attached to, whether we want to admit it or not. And, and, and the early first century rabbis were starting to say like, you either are taking the yoke of, of the government, the yoke of worldly concerns, or you're taking the yoke of God. And that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm getting to today. That's what I want to push you to understand is like, it's not the option of either be yoked to Jesus or be free. It is either have the yoke of this world or have the yoke that's easy, that's Jesus. It is either like you decide that, that you think you're free, but really you're lost and bound and tied to your sin. You're, you're tied to your own insecurities, your own struggles, your own wrestles, all the things that you've got to prove to the world that you are by your promotion, by your job, by your vehicle, by your house, by your family, by your fitness, all the things that are your yokes now that you were trying to say, I'm yoke free. Like, look at me. I'm getting yoked at the gym because I'm yoke free, but I'm just really doing it to show off, to really to prove to myself that I, that I have value. No, 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 you, you can actually trade that yoke. You can, you can trade that yoke for mine. You, you can give up the, the yoke and the burden of this world and you can find out that my yoke's easy and that my burden is light. You, you can hand it over. The first century uh, followers of Jesus thought that the yoke that he was gonna break off of them was, was the yoke of, of the Roman Empire. Like they're like, the Jewish people are meant to be free. Set us free, Jesus. You're gonna be like King David. You're gonna set us free. It's gonna be amazing. Let's go do this thing. And Jesus is like, no, no, no. There's a deeper yoke that I wanna set you free from. You think it's, it's, it's about who has chains on you that matters. No, 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 it's you having the chains in your soul. It's you being locked to your sin and your shame and your guilt and your need to prove something and your need to do something, your need to show off. All of these deep insecurities that we're wrestling with Jesus saying, no, no, that's what I'm here to set you free from. That's why he died on the cross for our sins is to set us free so that what we found out as the follower of, followers of Jesus could be physically chained and still be free. Like, like worshiping Jesus in the chains that, that Paul starts to write, like, I know what it's like to be content in all things. I know what it's like to have a lot of stuff and look good to everybody and be impressive to the world. I know what that's like. And I've learned to be content there. And I know what it's like to have nothing, to be shipwrecked, to be beaten, to be put in prison. I know what that's like as well. He's actually writing this while he's in prison. He's like, I know what that's like too. And I've learned to be content there. And I, I think the only reason Paul can get there, the only reason we could get to that place where it's like, it doesn't matter what happens in our government, who's elected. It doesn't matter what happens in our economy, what the interest rate is like, what's happening in war, wars across the world. No, no, no. I'm, I'm yoked to the one who set me free. I'm yoked to the one who's, who's got an easy burden. I'm, I'm yoked to the one who, whose burden is light and his yoke is easy. So I'm going to follow him and trust him. I'm going to trade the yoke of my, uh, of, of my life, my insecurities for his yoke because he said it was going to be easier. And we don't like to admit the yokes, but we have yokes of our addiction where we're, we're yoked to it because we haven't dealt with the insecurity. Like at first, the addiction usually most, like I think most stats would suggest that we don't just slip into addiction. We were 
compensating for something that we were wrestling with. We were coping with trauma that we had. And eventually, it be, the thing that maybe helped us be free for a moment became the thing that trapped us and kept us down. And, and maybe, maybe we have yokes that look better to everybody else. Maybe yours is an addiction. It's not the pills, not the drink, not the smoke. But maybe your yoke looks different. Maybe it looks good to everybody else. You're a workaholic. You put in 60, 70, 80 hours a week. And you're like, it looks good to the world, but internally, you know you're dying. Like, it's not a good time. And the more that you put in, the more work that you do, the, you're not more satisfied. Like, I, I've got more titles. I've got more money in the bank. I've got better this, better that. And yet, I'm still dying on the inside. Yeah, yeah, because the, the, the work that you're doing is probably a compensation for, for all the struggles, all the trauma, all the things that Jesus is trying to set you free from. And you've attached yourself to that yoke, all the burdens, all the things that we're wrestling with. We're trying to prove something, the yoke of sin that we're carrying, that we're burdened with. He said, no, no, you can trade that one too. And some of you right now in this moment, you're like, no, 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 not that sin. No, no, that sin. The one that you don't want to admit to yourself, that you, you, you keep kind of like the second I, I mentioned sin, you want to push it back down and be like, not that one. Let's not talk about that one. No, that one too. He says, I, I, can, I can take that burden off of you too. I can set you free from that one that, that no one else knows about, that's just between you and him, and you still try to hide it from him, but he knows. He's saying that one too. I can, I can set you free from that. So my, my measure today and my question for you as you kind of wrestle through what this means for your life, uh, the question I want you to ask yourself and wrestle with is, is your spiritual walk, your emotional journey, the, the call of God on your life, the direction you're heading with your life. If you could have a, a dashboard like you did on your car that tells you whether your oil pressure is too high or whether or not your car is overheating, if you could have a dashboard on your life that, that gave you warning signs, would it say you're running too hot? W would there be a test that said, yeah, yeah, no, no, you're pushing past the boundaries. Like you, you, your burden isn't light. Your yoke is not easy. And you, you, are, you are not, if that's true, right? If, if, our, if our dashboard says, my yoke is not easy, the li my life is not heading towards the direction of, of someone who gives rest to my soul. I'm not getting rest in my soul. I'm not getting rest in my emotions. I'm not, I'm not getting set free. I'm getting more and more burdened. Then I would argue that we're, probably carrying burdens that aren't ours, burdens that we've chosen that he hasn't chosen for us. We're probably attached to yokes that were never meant for us. We're attaching ourselves to things that were never designed to be ours because it's, he says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. So if I take a look and, I, and I'm writing my paper, the paper of my life and I'm pushing all the words to the margin. And if there's just one edit to my page, I don't have anything left. One little straw breaks the camel's back. I'm pushing past the burden as light at this moment. I'm riding past the margins. I got no extra space in my life for what God wants to do and for his burden is because it's too much, but it's never enough. You keep writing too much, but it's never going to be enough. You keep doing too much, but it's never going to be enough. You keep drinking, smoking, popping too much, but it's never going to be enough because his, his yoke is easy. His burden is light. And some of us are emotionally and spiritually limping in life. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 I actually... I actually set you free for that. Like I, I wanted you to understand what an easy yoke was and, and a, a light burden was. It's not, we're not meant to just limp along in our life. We're meant to walk in the freedom attached to the one who's setting us towards rest for our soul, attached to the one who's leading us to a healthy pasture, attached to the one who, who, who takes us beside still waters, attached to the one who has rest for our soul in store because we learn to trust him. We learn to follow him. And today, if you're, if you're feeling that and you're, you're wrestling in that, um, the first thing to do is just acknowledge it. Like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually matter how, what got you there, right? 90, at least in my life, 99% of the time, I did it to myself, right? It was something stupid I did, and I ended up way lost in a, in a field ac uh, you know, across town. And Jesus is like, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? I'm so sorry. I was just eating, and I just got lost, and the fence was broke down. And I just ran through it. I'm just an idiot, right? That's, that's my life. For some of you, you find yourself burdened because you took stuff on that wasn't yours. And somebody did something to you, something happened to you that just had nothing to do with you. You didn't do anything wrong and just life happened. Whichever way you find yourself burdened or limping along in life, I would say the first step is just to acknowledge that it's true. Like just to be okay saying, Jesus, I am doing too much. I'm carrying too much. I've got too much. I can't keep going 
with my engine light coming on. I can't keep going with, my, with, it, with it redlining every single day. Like I can't just keep faking it and looking good to the outside when internally I just know it's, it's too much. And yet it's never enough. I just, it's, I just know it's too much, but it's never enough. God, I just can't keep going. The first thing to do is acknowledge it. You just have to be honest with yourself enough to go, it's just too much. Whether it's in prayer or worship or through community, whatever it looks like to find that out. Gauge your, the, the barometer of your life. You, some of you have some people that you're close enough to that they can gauge. Like, no, 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 you're not admitting to yourself, but you're stressed. Like, they, they can watch you, and if you'll just ask the question or let them invite them in, they can tell you, no, 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 you're pushing the limits of your, of your life, and you, you don't want to admit it to yourself, but you're going too far. Some of you, in the moments when you wake up, you can feel it. It's just honest with yourself. The first time you wake up, you're going to go, I, I don't got enough for today. Like, I just, I'm, I'm at capacity. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking about just waking up groggy. I'm talking about, like, I just don't have enough in the tank for the day. And then we hit, we, our feet hit the floor. We go get our coffee, our energy drink, and then we just fake it till we make it. We just push through and we just push through and we keep redlining, keep redlining. And at some point, you've got to stop and come to the one who provides rest. Come sit at his feet and find out, I just need to lay this thing down. I just need to give it to you. And, you and, and the way you do that may look different for a lot of people. For me, a lot of times it's in worship or a quiet drive or both. For you, it might be in community with people. Whatever it is that looks like you, it, it, metaphorically, sitting at the feet of Jesus and saying, I, I, I'm going to actually take this off. I'm going to actually just not carry this anymore. Because it, it really is too much. You don't have the capacity to carry every burden. The only thing you have the capacity for is his burden, right? If you acknowledge that, that he's got good in store for you and you believe that about him, then you can trust that everything that you worry about, everything that you carry, every burden that's weighing you down and your knees are shaking and you feel like you're gonna buckle in the, the donkey metaphor of life and you're just carrying a burden, every bit, if you trust him, you go, I don't, have to, I don't actually have to carry that. I put that on me, not you. I don't actually have to carry, I only have to carry what you've called me to carry. Because what Jesus has called us to carry, he says, is light, right? It, it may not be light for the next person, but it's light for you because it's your call, your gift, your anointing, and you're called to carry that. But you don't have room for both. You don't have the strength for both. You can't carry the world's burdens and your burden. You've got to decide what Jesus has called you to do, right? There's still a burden, he still called you with it and gifted you to do something, to live a certain way, to, to reach a certain group of people. You still have a yoke. You still have a burden. It's just light. Because when he goes to, to, to place on you what you're called to do, his is light, right? And many of us are living a life where we're just like going to the gym and you put too much weight on all of a sudden and you, and, and you know it's too much. There's a, there's a weight that's just the right amount. There's a weight that's going to help you get a little bit better. It's going to help you get stronger. And then there's a weight that's going to pop your shoulder out of socket. Your lower back is going to be shot for a month if you, push that, if you try to lift that kind of weight. There is a weight that is healthy for you and that is God has placed on you, and then there is a weight that will kill you. And many of us are walking around with all the weights, all the burdens that we've placed on ourselves and saying, no, no, I got this. I can do this. And everybody's like, no, I don't. Can you? Like that seems like a lot. Let me give you an example. You can't, you can't stay on social media 24 hours a day and carry the burden of everybody who's struggling. Like this week alone, just stuff that happened in our town, if you are highly empathetic, you're going to recognize, I can't, I can't carry that. And, and for, for most of you, probably all of you, that's not yours to carry. And yet you're trying to carry it. You're trying to carry the weight of stuff that's going on around you in our world. And it's just, it's not yours. And if you think you're Jesus and you're here to save the world and carry the burden of the weight, then you can't come to him and let him have it because you think you got to do it. But if you trust him, you'll come to him and go, I wish I could fix this. I wish I could fix my kids. I wish I could fix my spouse. I wish I could fix social media. I wish I could fix that person around the world that's struggling. I, I wish I could fix all the kids that are starving. I wish I could fix all of this, Jesus. But it's not mine to carry, so I'll give it to you. So what have you called me to carry? You come to Jesus and recognize, like, what have you called me to carry? One, another thing that I've noticed that the reason we try to carry too much is, uh, is we, try to, we try to, like, carry comparatively. Like we're a bunch of donkeys just walking and we're looking over at like our other donkey neighbors and we're like, oh, well, they can, 
they can do all that, right? Like we're on Instagram, like, oh, look at that, look at that person. They, can, they seem like they got their life together. My life should look like theirs. And so we keep burdening ourselves with stuff comparatively. We keep weight, putting on weight of stuff for, uh, from other people. And God's like, I didn't, that's, that's between that donkey and his master, right? That's between that donkey and the farmer, not between you and your master. Because your master said the burden was going to be light and the yoke was going to be easy. You don't need to compete. When you look Jesus in the face, he's not going to go, did you carry as much as your cousin? Did you carry as much as your neighbor? Did you carry as much as your mom did? Did you carry as much as your grandparents did? No, he said, did you carry what I called you to carry? Did you, did you do what I had asked you to do? Did you place, did you, did you come to me and lay every other burden aside and trust me with the yoke and trust me with my burden? See, for me, what I recognize is there's some of us that um, maybe a couple years ago, we could carry more. Maybe 10 years ago, we, we thought we were stronger, we could carry more. There's stuff in life that just happens. And there are seasons in life where we can't carry the same. Like you can't do as much. There's just, you just have to be okay with that because you know you're carrying what he's called you to carry, not what you've placed on yourself. And today I hope and pray that you are comfortable enough with the master, with the farmer, with the more mature animal to attach yourself to Jesus and go, I'll do it your way. So for me, uh, I, I, I've recognized that I'm in a season where I have to come back to the scripture, which throughout my life, I've had to come back to these verses. And, and when, when ministry gets too heavy, when family stuff starts to come in or people you love start to come in, it just is too much. You love people well and you want to see more for them. You start to carry burdens and you realize I can't fix it all. I come back to these verses. And I go, oh, I, I was trying to be Jesus. I was trying to con- control it. Jesus, this is yours. Tell me what to do. I, I, I can't fix the outcome, but I can fix the input. I can do my part for you, Jesus. So tell me what to do because I can't fix all this and it's too much for me. In this last season, uh, most of you know, uh, we had a, a, a tragedy last July in our family. And uh, what I know about me is that um, my capacity is limited. Like it's, it's reduced. Like in this season, my capacity is limited. Now I'm not, this is illustrative. I don't, I don't, you can always pray for me as your pastor. I'm fine with that, but I don't need, this is not for me to gain encouragement from you. I don't need in the lobby you feeling sad for me. I'm not trying to get you to feel sad for me. It's not what this is about. Irritably, oh no, your capacity, you're so amazing. No, 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 that's not, that's not what we're here for. That's not what we're doing. Uh, But what we are doing is recognizing that I can come to Jesus and go, I know. I can't, I can't foresee the things that I used to foresee, just like watching trends and, and habits and things. I can't lead at the capacity I used to lead at. I, I don't have the empathy I used to have. Like, it's just decreased. Like, my own estimate, at least by 30%. My own capacity, my own ability, my own gift sets, at least decreased by 70%. And I have the choice to whether just to be okay in the healing, because that's what I'm doing. I'm healing. Like, I'm, I, I can't carry as much. I'm a, I'm a donkey whose leg got broken. Jesus is patching it. He's bringing me a stent. He's getting me whatever you would do for a donkey other than shoot it, because he's not going to shoot me. But he's, he's, he's healing me up. Maybe he will. But right now, he's not. And I'm getting healed to walk. And, and, and I'm trusting him with, to carry only his burden. Like, and, and I've seen this. Here's what I've seen. I've seen enough ministers Try to keep carrying it in the middle of the pain. And two, three, four years down the road, you'll see addictions, you'll see affairs, you'll see all kinds of stuff. You'll never connect the dots. You'll never connect the dots that, oh, they kept trying to carry the same weight when they got injured. When they were in trouble in their family, when they lost a staff member, when thing, people were hurting, they kept trying to carry the same weight. And it bled out until they buckled, until they snapped, until they ended up in a, a place they didn't want to end up. And so for me, I, I, this is something that I learned years ago to go back to Jesus and trust him with my burden. Like, like I, don't, I just don't have it, so tell me what's easy. Tell me what's light. Tell me what, my, what, what burden I'm supposed to carry because I want your yoke, not my own. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna compensate for my insecurities. I don't wanna compare myself to the pastor down the road and how much they're doing or what they're doing. I only wanna be able to look you in the face when I die and go, I carried what you called me to carry because that's all that matters. And the interesting part about it is like I've, I've limited my capacity and just been aware of like, all right, God, I, I can't do as much. What's interesting about that whole idea of coming to him and saying, all right, I just can't carry enough. God, care, tell me what to carry. In this season, this is not for empathy. I'm reduced, just 100% fact. I'm reduced in my capacity. And what I've seen is like last, the last quarter of last fall, I saw us trending up. Like our, our numbers, our invites, the number of salvations, all these things like, oh, cool. God can do stuff without me. Like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not as important as I thought I was. I'm worse, but yet the church is doing better. 
And then at the new year, it just, we just like turned another corner and we went from like really healthy 15 to 20% year over year growth to all of a sudden like 60, 70 and 80% year over year in growth, which is absurd. It's almost like we're getting close to doubling in our size year over year. While I'm at limited capacity, while the lead pastor has reduced his capacity and said, there's only so much I can carry, only so much I can do. The trends that I'm seeing are less. The way I can lead your staff is less. The empathy that I have to do pastoral care is less. All of it is less. And still God is doing more. Still God is doing more. Here's what it tells me. It tells me that my capacity is not the definition of growth. My capacity is not the end all be all for what happens in this life. But you know what is? Faithfulness. Jesus has never called you to carry more than you can carry. Jesus has never called you to take a yoke on that's going to break your neck. Jesus never called you to have your knees buckling under the pressure of this life. Come and lay it at his feet. He just says, carry the burden I've got. And if it's reduced in this season while you're healing, be okay with it. Be okay with the therapy. Be okay with the marriage counseling. Be okay with your finances being adjusted. Be okay with all the stuff, all the work it takes to come and get healed because that's the burden he's called you to in this season. To just trust him because the, ne- the way the needle moves is not from my capacity, but it's from my faithfulness. From us trusting him with our life and saying, I am not the savior of the world. I can't fix all this stuff, but what I can do is trust you to do it. I can't trust you with the input. I'll, I'll trust you with my input and trust you with the outcome. I'll be faithful to do what you've called me to do and trust you with the rest. And so this morning, as you're wrestling through what you do. I would, I would challenge you, if, you're, if you recognize the, the dashboard of your life is at red, it's just you're maxed out. I mean, you're, it's not, the engine didn't blow yet. You may not, you may not be a fool, like you're, you're, you're like about to be inpatient. You're not, you're not at that capacity, but you know one more thing, one, just another little deal. You know, come lay it at his feet. Like just take a moment this week, go for a drive, find a prayer closet, do something that spiritually allows you to go, Jesus, what is going on? Why am I carrying more than my fair share? Why am I trying to impress the world? Why am I doing that? And let him get deep in your soul to release you from the burdens that are not yours. To release you. And you, you, like, I don't don't care if you physically have to go to him and just start to physically start to unload some things and say, all right, this one's like, just just write it down, burn it in a trash pile if you have to. Take off a physical backpack and say, this is the burden of trying to fix my family when I don't have capacity. This is the burden of trying to fix all of these things in the world, the hurting people, the lost and dying people, all the people that I can't save that I want to save. This is yours, not mine. And then you go, all right, I take it all off. All right, now what's mine? What's the next step I'm supposed to do? That's it. That's all. That's it. Just one step at a time. The donkey just has to attach to the yoke just to know one step. All right, you just, all right, God, just one step at a time. Over and over again in my life, I've come back to this. So you may have to make it a weekly mantra where you go, the burden's not mine. The burden's not mine. The weight is not mine. The yoke is not mine. It is yours, God. You may have to come back to this and have statements in your brain that help remind you that I cannot fix it all. I can't save it all, but I can follow. I can trust. I can love well. All right, Jesus, what am I, how am I called to speak to this person? How am I called to love in this situation? And you lay it at his feet. Every, it, it may take every day. There may be seasons where you have to do it every single day. I, I know in the season of forgiveness where I knew I had to let go of some hatred and some anger, it was every single day, sometimes 10 times a day, where I went back to him and I said, I, don't, I can't, I, it's yours. I just, I, I just want to fight this person. I would like to slash some tires and slash some other things. It's not mine, God, it's yours. And it was over and over again that I had to lay down the burden, lay down the weight. So if you have to do it 10 times a day, trust your master. Trust, trust that he's got a yoke that is easy and a burden is light and come to him over however long it takes, whatever it takes. Trust him with your life, which means trusting him with your burdens. And he is the one who is going to lead you towards rest, towards peace, towards health, towards capacity that grows, not capacity that breaks. Let's pray.